Siemens' new Accelerate Mechanical Splice Termination Kit incorporates an exclusive dual-process activation tool which dramatically reduces termination time. The toolkit is capable of terminating both SC and LC style connectors without any time-consuming changeover. Before terminating, verify that all required tools are available. Prepare the activation tool by releasing and opening the crimp handle. Move the handle release latch away from the handle to unlock. This handle can also be released by fully depressing and the handle will unlock and release automatically. Also open the connect the securing lever as shown here. The Accelerate mechanical connectors are offered in both single mode and multi mode LC and SC versions. Prepare the connector for loading into the activation tool by removing the rubber grommet covering the lead in tube on the back of the connector. Do not remove the front protective cap or replace with an alternate style cap as this cap is sized specifically for proper operation of the Accelerate crimp tool. Also note that these caps should not be reused after one termination cycle since the caps can deform slightly with each cycle of the Accelerate tool and will result in increasingly higher attenuation. Insert the connector into the slot provided in the tool such that the knurled section of the metal shaft rests on the slot opening in line with the connector securing lever. It may help to insert the connector by gripping the front cap on the SC style connector because of the play in the housing. This will ensure the shaft is fully inserted. The orientation of the latch or connector body is irrelevant. This can be in any rotation outside the slot opening. Rotate the securing lever to hold the connector in place. If aligned properly, the lever will contact the knurled section of the metal shaft. Do not push the crimp handle partially down in order to trap the connector during insertion. This can initiate the activation before the fiber is inserted causing high insertion loss. The black securing lever is sufficient enough to hold the connector in place during the preparation. Locate the template card provided and follow the guide for the specific connector being terminated. The card depicts proper strip length for two different connector types. With the end of the fiber placed even with the end point shown on the template card, mark the strip length as shown. Also place the additional reference line mark indicated to be used as a visual aid during the insertion step. Don't forget to install the boot by sliding the narrow end first down the fiber until it is out of the way. Next remove the section of buffer coating up to the first mark using a buffer stripper. To avoid breaking the fiber, remove the buffer in several small sections. Note that not all buffered fibers are manufactured equally and some buffer coatings can actually be removed safely in one piece but in any case, consistent results can be obtained by removing in smaller portions. Carefully inspect each fiber after stripping to verify the protective coating is also removed. Notice the remnants of the protective coating on these fiber strands. Sometimes mistaken to be the fiber cladding, this coating must be completely removed or the fibers will not fit in the connector. Clean the bare fiber with two passes of an alcohol wipe, being careful not to touch the fiber after it is cleaned. Also be careful not to remove the reference mark. Prepare the cleaver by lifting open the cover plate. The fiber debris container should also be checked for excess fiber stubs. When full, the draw can easily slide out for proper disposal. Select the applicable guide slot for your fiber size. For 900 micron buffered fibers, lay the prepared fiber onto the larger of the two slots with the leading edge of the buffer even with 8 mm mark. Be sure the tip of the fiber enters the opening of the debris container and rests on the rubber pads as straight as possible. While gently holding the fiber in place with your left hand, close the main cover plate completely, pressing firmly to activate the spring-loaded blade carriage. 
Swing open the cover until it locks into place to complete the cleave cycle. The cleaved fiber stub will be drawn into the fiber debris compartment by the motion of the cover being opened. Carefully remove the freshly cleaved fiber without contaminating the end face. The fiber is now ready for insertion into the connector. It is not necessary or recommended to re-wipe the fiber after cleaving as this technique could leave debris deposits on the end face where it is difficult to clean precisely. Carefully lay the fiber onto the fiber guide channel with the fiber end close to the lead-in tube of the connector. Avoid dragging the tip of the fiber along the guide slot to prevent contaminating the fiber end face. Remember to periodically clean out the guide slot to help prevent inadvertent contamination. Gently slide the fiber into the connector as straight as possible to avoid bumping the edge of the lead-in tube. Once inside the lead-in tube, the fiber should slide in smoothly. If you feel resistance prior to full insertion, do not force the fibers in. Adjust the position by rotating the fiber slightly, then try again. During fiber insertion, the fiber may miss the hole in the connector and the end face can touch the outside of the connector or parts of the tool. This will contaminate the end face and may cause high insertion loss if a termination is performed. It is recommended to recleave the fiber if this occurs. Any attempts to clean the contaminated fiber end face will typically be unsuccessful and may even deposit additional debris onto the end face during the wiping process. Use the reference line mark on the buffer to verify the fiber is fully inserted. Once you feel the fibers firmly stop against the internal fiber stub, check the location of the reference line mark. If fully inserted and measured correctly, the mark should be visible just before the entrance of the lead-in tube. Hold the fiber securely into the connector by placing gentle but consistent inward pressure, enough to form a slight bow in the fiber as shown here. While maintaining inward pressure, depress the tool handle as far as it will go to crimp the fiber into place. Be careful not to inadvertently contact the bowed fiber while pressing the crimp handle. Remove the connector by opening the small securing lever and lifting the connector straight up and out of the tool. Finally slide the boot back up and gently press into place while holding the connector housing. Never pull on the fiber to engage the boot or while holding the terminated connector as this can cause a gap at the splice joint resulting in the excessive insertion loss. Although not required with the Siemens Accelerate connector, it is always good practice to clean the end face thoroughly just prior to connection. This is especially true if the factory installed protective cap was inadvertently removed at any point during the termination. An alcohol wipe followed by a clean, dry, lint-free wipe will ensure reliable results. A properly cleaned end face can make a significant difference in the performance of your system. The guide slot on the activation tool should be kept as clean as possible to prevent debris from transferring onto the fiber end face. Do not wipe any coating remains from the fiber with your fingers after stripping. Oils from your fingers can transfer to the rubber pads of the cleaver, reducing the effectiveness of the clamp arm, resulting in a poor cleave. Always use 99% reagent grade isopropyl alcohol for cleaning. The cleaver blade wheel should be periodically rotated for proper operation and consistent cleave quality. The fiber debris compartment will need to be temporarily pulled out to access the set screw that secures the blade. Remove the 1.5 mm Allen wrench from the bottom of the cleaver body. Partially open the cover plate until the set screw becomes accessible through the opening of the fiber debris compartment. Make note of the current blade number position. While holding the cover in place, loosen the set screw with the wrench by rotating counterclockwise 1 to 5 rotations.
Use a cotton swab or the like to gently rotate the blade to the next incremental position counterclockwise. The blade should easily rotate if the set screw was loosened enough. Each of the 16 blade positions is rated for 3,000 cleaves for a total life cycle of 48,000 cleaves. Once all 16 positions have been used, the blade is at the end of its life cycle. If a cleave is accidentally made with the protective coating still on the fiber, be sure to clean the blade carefully as any coating debris on the blade may cause a miscleave. Periodically check and clean the guide channel as well as the rubber clamping pads and fiber debris wheels. The blade height is adjusted to a very sensitive height. Debris in the channel or on the pads can alter the height of the fiber during cleaving, resulting in a miscleave. If any miscleaves occur, strip the buffer back further and cleave in a different location. Do not try to recleave in the same location on the fiber.